you have to go ahead. Hi everyone, I'm Tran Bowie. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So tomorrow restaurants in Georgia are allowed to reopen its doors, its dining room on a limited basis and with restrictions. And tonight we're going to talk to a local business owner about what her decision is going to be. But before we get started, I do want to ask that we try very hard to be kind and understanding and compassionate throughout this whole thing. I know it has been such a tough decision for business owners um, and the staff who are going through this. So joining me now is Maryam Atak, and she is the hi, she is the owner of Cafe Istanbul. Um, Cafe Istanbul actually has three locations, uh, Decatur, Kennesaw, and um, Alpharetta, um, so on the edge of uh, Roswell. And Miriam has actually been in business for 24 years. And Miriam, what I think is interesting about your business is that you have a restaurant, but it also continues into the evening. And so it becomes a hot spot for, you know, evening entertainment as well. So this has got to be a big hit for you. Hi, Tran. Thank you for having me on today. Thank you for Roswell Snobs as well. Um, yes, of course, because I am not just designated for dining in and coming in and having dinner and leaving. I'm also not designated for doing takeout, which has uh, been a big hit for me when, when they said you know, no more restaurants because we have belly dancing, we have live DJ on the weekends with a huge dance floor all three locations where you come in, you eat dinner, you dance, you have celebrations. So this has hit us, you know, very, very hard. Right, because you're not, now you're relying on takeout and delivery. So just food. Um, let's get right to it. What do you plan to do tomorrow? I will not be opening up tomorrow. I have made that decision. I just simply am not prepared. Um, I'm not prepared for myself. I'm not prepared for you as a customer. I'm not prepared for my staff. And until I see where I can be prepared so I can say 100% it's a safety for us, for the customer, until then I cannot make a decision to open. I just don't feel that right now, Tran. Well, I understand. And you will continue to do um, carry out and deliver. Yes. So when the whole situation started, which was second week of March, we immediately closed. And to tell you the truth, when they said close, there was only one case in Georgia that um, had just, just started. So when the government said close, I was like, why are we closing? There's only one case of COVID-19. And I didn't understand at the point. But then once we did close and the numbers started going up, I had to come up with, oh my gosh, let's start advertising for catering, takeout, curve pickup, curbside pickup, which in 24 years, I've really not had to concentrate on that before. So this was a brand new experience for me to do the pickup, to do the curbside, to push Uber Eats. And now that we did close and the numbers have risen tremendously, of course, I'm not ready to open. Yeah, so let's look at the different restaurants. How many people are still working? And how has the response been to the pickup and delivery? So the response has been great, thanks to all my family and friends. They have supported me tremendously. And I, I, I bring tears to my eyes. I don't know what I would have done. It was all word of mouth. It was all advertisement on social media to come and get pickup curbside for me, that it is safe to pick up from me. And our food, of course, is homemade from scratch. I really don't even need more than one chef in the restaurant right now because I don't need a server. I don't need, but it's always the people that are in the kitchen is all I need to get the food out either through Uber Eats or curbside pickup. Um, so we're getting a bunch of responses in. Archis Shishadri says he loves the Alfredo location. That's the location I went go to as well. Um, and we're getting a lot of other people. Thank you for waiting. It's from Jenna. Um, and we have Aduno here saying hi, ladies. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I think this is a decision that had to be hard. Um, so I want to run through, let me just see here, make sure I get all the, the information out. Um, so let me just run through. I actually got a copy of some, I mean, there's quite a list of restrictions. So this announcement came last week and you're allowed to open on Monday. And in this time, it says no more than 10 people per 500 square feet are allowed inside at one time. All employees are um, required to wear masks at all times. 
Um, employers have to be screened and um, they have to evaluate the workers. So that means you have to check their temperature. You have to ask them, have you been sick? Have you been coughing? Have you not been feeling well? Shortness of breath. Um, you have to post signs. It says there are no symptoms of COVID-19 um, that can enter. The party size is no more than six per table. So um, I wanted to get your response to that because when you have three big restaurants and you can only have six per table and you probably can't have them that close, how would that affect you? It's affected tremendously. Like I, 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 I have stated before, not only is this affected me, but the fact that we closed in March because they told us to close. So we were closed March and April and now we're going into May. They won rent from me for the two months that I was closed. Obviously, I have zero income coming in from two of the restaurants. The one restaurant that I've kept open to do Uber Eats and curbside pickup is just enough to get me by until I'm able to fully open the restaurant. It's not any kind of an income where I'm able to pay thousands of dollars of rent to my landlord. I just want to make that very clear. So when they said open up, immediately all landlords reach out to all the businesses around Atlanta, and now they're ready to collect the two months previous rent also, which is a huge, huge hit for all of our business owners, small business owners like us in Atlanta. So now they're saying open, great. Well, A, I'm not ready to open, obviously, because of sanitation reasons. And until I'm 100% sure that I'm sanitizing my restaurant for your safety, my employees' safety, customer safety, staff safety, I'm not going to open. But then they tell me I can only have 10 people at a time, six of it at per table. So how am I supposed to make money from 10 people, Trent? That's impossible. $10,000 rent with 10 people at my restaurant. So are you going to come and open up $1,000 tabs with me? How am I going to do this? And how am I going to dance on my dance floor six feet apart? Yeah, I'm not to open for anybody. I, I can feel your frustration. I completely understand. Um, and I know, I think that once the announcement was made, it sounded like all restaurants are going to open, but this is not mandatory. So every restaurant can make you know their own decision. Um, I want to continue running through this list because I think it's really important, um, not just for restaurant owners, but also for patrons. So when you are going to the restaurant, I mean, we have we as customers also need to be aware um, and be on the lookout. So restaurants must also use pre-rolled silverware. So you can't just hand out um, forks and you know and spoons and napkins. They have to already be pre-rolled. Um, items should be removed from the self-service um, drink, condiments, utensils. So in the, in those places where you go and you pick out those items or you make your own drinks, you're not allowed to have that. Right. Um, patrons must also be kept separate while waiting to be seated through the floor markings or they're going to have to wait in the cars. So when if you are coming to a restaurant, when you're used to like all hanging out by the door waiting to be seated, that no longer is allowed as well. Um, and so if you show any signs of illness, you can't come to work. And then if you do get sick and you have to self-isolate for seven days and then you have to be symptom free for three days before you return to work. Um, I mean, this is just, you know, this is just this list here and I didn't even go through all of them. So I, I'm a little overwhelmed looking at that. So I'm sure that it is for you um, as well. When you saw I mean, that. I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor myself, but from what I've been keeping up with the news, a lot of people have this sickness and they don't even have symptoms. So am I supposed to be like this big tarot reader and read your palm and see if you have a sickness or not? How am I supposed to know if people coming in my door are sick or not? I can do the best I can do. But, you know, it just doesn't make sense. I feel like I'm not ready to open. I feel like Georgia is not ready to open. And it was just way too soon to put this out there because we don't have Lysol. We don't have the necessities to open. I got to get the mask, gloves, Lysol. And I, and, and I was, as I was saying before, I don't know how even, uh, you know, when you go to the restrooms, when you use the restrooms, how am I going to keep up with cleaning up after people? So that is why until I get all my priorities straight, and I understand exactly what it's needed to clean the restaurants and, and all the areas that are being used. I can't promise to open for my, I'm not, I'm not happy with my family coming in there, let alone, you know, having customers. And how's your staff doing? I know this is, has to be tough on them. Um, it's been you know, very, very tough. As you know, for servers and bartenders, it's a big, big, even the kitchen staff, it's such a big hit. All of their income is gone. They did not even start receiving unemployment until literally a week ago. 
once they started receiving unemployment a week ago, then they come and say restaurants are now allowed to open up, which I can't open up. And I've told them that I'm not ready to open up. And they all understand, of course, but they're ready to make money and they're ready to get back out there. But it's just not safe right now, Tran. As I see, numbers have not lowered. I just don't. I wake up every morning looking at the news and looking at the numbers. And it's not a place where I can open up for myself right now. So I know that you can't um, predict, but what are you thinking? Some, so some restaurants are actually going, are following your suit as well. They, they're choosing to wait. Um, this was, you know, besides the, the safety factor, many felt like it was just too soon. They just could not have their business ready. And so a lot of restaurants are thinking about opening in mid-May. Um, is that a possibility for you? Well, I'm just like them. I was thinking in my head mid-May also. But like I said, when they told our restaurants, all of my restaurants and, and all the restaurants in Georgia to close, it came out of nowhere. We were shocked that they're telling us to close. So once we did close, then they tell us we have four days to prepare to open on Monday. They, they tell us, guess what, next Monday you're opening. How are we going to be prepared for that, Trina? Like I said, I don't even know where's Lysol. I don't even know how I'm supposed to keep everything clean for everybody. So it came from, no, they should have said next month. On this date, I would have had a month time to open, but like this, of course, I'm not prepared at all. And I don't see how any other restaurant can be prepared either, to tell you the truth. How do we prepare our staff in one week's time? Well, I want to get to the financial part. Um, I know that you tried um, for some small business loans and you were not able to get that. Have you been able to find any kind of other help, um, whether it's you know fundraisers or relief funds or uh, loans or anything like that? Or, and are you still looking into that? Okay, so no, I have not done any fundraisers and I hope to God that I don't have to do, I don't want it to come to that point. Um, I have applied for the payroll protection loan. And like I said, when my landlord is asking me for the last two months, and they're saying, did you get the payroll protection loan? A, no, I didn't get it. And B, that's not that's not supposed to go towards my rent. So I did apply for the EIDL loan, which I haven't heard zero about, nothing. I haven't even heard that they received my application. So I have no idea what's going on with that. But um, because of this, uh, we've had to, my husband's had a, business, a blinds company for about 20 years that's been on the side that he's been working on. And, and because the restaurants grew and grew, he put that on a side. But since this happened, he's gone heavily back into the blinds company, which is called Chem Blinds. And, and we're, we're trying to do more of that kind of business. And my brother is with a company that does roofing and they're called Essex. So I have to move on and, and make money so I can have enough to keep the doors of the restaurant open because I don't see it with 10 customers coming in at a time how I'm going to be able to pay rent, keep my employees. I just don't see it. So I have to go on all other avenues to try to bring income in. And that's what we're trying to do right now. Well, wow. and, you know, and that's, um, that's something that a lot of us don't think about is that this is your livelihood. So many restaurant owners, many business, small business owners out there. So this is your livelihood. Um, what do you do? And what I see that you've done is you've turned to other avenues. You've found other ways to bring income in, in the meantime. So yes, I, I commend you for doing that. Um, instead of just sitting back and going, oh, you know, where's the help? Um, so we will put the information um, here and on the page as well for the blinds company yeah. and um, the roofing company. And you did say that there's a free estimate on the roofing. We've had so much rain, so now may be a good time to get your roof inspected. Yeah, and I always laugh and I say, this is the face of the new blinds company. <laughs> the blinds company has been business, my husband's face, but now it's my face. And of course for roofing, so Ken Blind, Essex, Cafe Istanbul, please, please, please support in any way you can because the restaurant business has been hit the hardest. You know, um, our Lisa Schwabel who runs Roswell's Knobs, so during the quarantine, she has told business owners and nonprofits and any kind of organizations in this area, if you want to promote your business, please just put it on our page. We awesome. want to help you during this time. I mean, we're just we're all on the computer anyway and on our devices. So now it's a good time to promote your business. And we know, you know, I can't personally say what you're going through because you're you have a much bigger business um, than what I have. But. I feel your pain. I totally, um, you know, we want to try to help you and just lift you up. So 
with that said, we don't know about the timeline. Um, and, you know, we're getting all these predictions and the time keeps changing. But do you think you will recover after this? That's the hard, that's the million dollar question right now, because I don't see recovery for restaurants for a couple of months to tell you the truth, Tran. Me, myself, as a mother of teenagers, I don't think I'm comfortable letting my kids go into restaurants right now. And I don't see that happening for a couple of months down the line. That is why I had to get involved with my husband's blinds company immediately. And because he's not on social media like I am, he doesn't promote like I promote. And I need to find other avenues of money coming in because I really don't see the restaurant business. I mean, I see, okay, we'll all open the doors, but who's coming in? Who's coming in to eat with me? Let's just be real. I think that we need a couple of more months for people to feel comfortable enough to go out to eat and put their trust in my hands, put their trust in my employees' hands that we're doing everything we can to keep you safe, as in we're trying to keep ourselves safe as well. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I know that this has been heavy on you and you know and judging from the comments i think you made the right decision and any decision that you feel comfortable with is your decision and it's the right decision so even for restaurants out there if you choose to open um we are not to judge so we are here to support and whether that's diet you know whether it's um pickup or delivery we'll continue to post about the restaurants that that have that and again lisa said, just put it on the page. So if you want to promote your restaurant, thank you so much for joining us. Tran, I appreciate everybody so much. I have had so much comfort from all my friends and family. And without you guys, I could not even get through this period of time. So I appreciate each and everybody who's been trying to support me in any way they can. And I love you all. Thank you so much. Aww. Well, that's the light at the end of this tunnel is that we have all really been together and we've seen each other through this vulnerable time. So um, have a good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Thank you everybody.